Okay, we are live now. We're in Waikiki at the, well, we're gonna go upstairs to the uh, Pacific Regional Visitor Center of the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, who are now thousands of miles away in uh, North Dakota about to restart uh, the process of uh, building the pipeline. Anyway, here's Dave. All right, thanks, Doug. Um, glad you could be here and join us for our visit to the Army Corps of Engineers, yeah. their Pacific Regional Visitor Center here in Honolulu in Waikiki, their Fort Rossi. Uh, the reason we're here at the Army Corps of Engineers facility is timed with, as Doug mentioned, about 3,600 miles this direction in North Dakota. You may have heard of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, it's been in the news some. Anyway, today is a very important day there because the water protectors who have been in camps protesting the pipeline, which they say goes across uh, treaty lands of the, uh, the Sioux people, um, have an eviction that's coming up in about 15 minutes. So 2-22, February 22nd at 2 o'clock in North Dakota, which is 10 o'clock here in Hawaii, is the time that they've been given for vacating the camp and some of the protectors are staying and it's kind of a tense time we're, we're going to see what happens and we thought we'd take this opportunity to be here in solidarity at another army corps facility thousands of miles away introducing the facility and tell you a little bit about the pipeline so what we're going to do is um, go inside we're going to be able to show you a little bit about the um, environmental principles that are on display on the wall there, show you a timeline that they've set up about Army Corps history, and we've actually, we'll see this later, but we've made our own uh, exhibit that we're going to donate to the museum, and this exhibit is specifically about the Dakota Access Pipeline, and we think it'll make a nice complement to the displays already here in the museum. So let's go in and say hello, see if the ranger is in, and take a look around. Great. Okay, we'll we'll follow you in. You're live from uh, Waikiki right now, which is the district of Honolulu, Hawaii. 3,600 miles away from uh, Dapple, the Dakota Access Pipeline, Standing Rock. We're going upstairs now. And the visitor center is just above the Army Museum downstairs in Battery Land. So. And this actually was a bunker, uh, converted from a bunker, right? It was yeah, or munition storage or something like that, so the walls are pretty thick. Here we go. This is, this is one of the galleries here. We're actually wanting to go to the place right next door here. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get some of the We're going to um, let some of our viewers know about the facility and oh, some of your exhibits. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh -huh. So as you can see, the, uh, the Army Corps, a lot of their projects have to do with water, their engineering projects. And since this is the Pacific region, uh, the exhibits here focus on projects in the Pacific region, some of which are in Hawaii and on Oahu. So for instance, here we've got the Kaneohe Kailua Dam project. This is probably the biggest display here in the Army Corps uh, Visitor Center. And um, so it's a project that's in response to a lot of flooding in Kaneohe. It's uh, put in and um, I guess it was completed in, or began building in 76. So anyway, a lot of history here. 
a lot of people don't know about this facility. No, so I never, I never didn't know anything about it. Yeah, sometimes tourists make their way over here, but a lot of local folks may not even know to come over and check it out. So, then why don't we just take a look? Um, Maybe we'll focus. walk around the, on the walls. Yeah, we I can guess take we can kind of. Why don't we loop around here, and then we'll end up over here where some of the environmental stewardship principles are on display. Okay, surviving the floods. Actually, I remember these floods. Kawainui. So does the, the Army Corps have, um, do some uh, work on, on these projects? Because I remember these floods. And uh, of course, I know Kawainui Marsh. Yeah. I so guess so, I think yeah. All these projects have um, some in involvement of the Army Corps. I'm going to get a. Still of this. Got a <laughs> kind of multitasking here. Ranger can help us with if we have specific questions too. Protecting Hawaii's wetlands. This is a great uh, photo mural of uh, Ko'olau, Ko'olau area, yeah? Yeah. So if you've been to Homolokia Botanical Gardens and that um, Reservoir area where you can you can even do I think catch and release fishing. That's an that's an Army Corps project. So I see. Those botanical gardens were um, kind of created at the same time this flood control project was put in. So that's also a wonderful place to visit. Water should be to watershed approach. Okay. So we're going to come back to this one, uh, Doug. I want to show you this right over here. Okay. I just kind of wanted to point out this. Some uh, of the displays here are... Get close so I can get the... Water is the key to life. Yeah, water is the key to life. And that, you know, we were just discussing outside a little bit about the, the Dakota Access Pipeline Project. And one of the rallying cries uh, for that campaign against the pipeline is water, water is life. Water is life. Only, it's kind of interesting to hear that echo here on the, in the signage. And, it, and it's always been a motto here in Hawaii, too. And then coming back over to the uh, environmental stewardship sign, I just let's take a look at this um, section here. We'll just kind of give it a quick read. Environmental stewardship as stewards of the lands and waters at water resources projects. The Corps' mission is to manage and conserve those natural resources to serve the needs of present and future generations through prevention, conservation, and preservation. So under prevention, they've got eliminate pollution to the greatest extent possible. Conservation, manage core lands to ensure long-term natural resource productivity. And preservation, protect natural and cultural resources. So just kind of important to note um, some of the emissions as spelled out in the language used in the, the signage here. That it does say mission. Core's mission is to con manage and conserve natural resources to serve the needs of present and future generations. Right. Okay, sound like a bunch of good guys. So <laughs> she said rather cynically. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just gonna take a look at your time okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks. So I don't think we have time to look at everything, but I want to bring your attention over to um, a timeline here of the core history. Okay. Um, and just as a reference for you to when you come back later, hopefully those of you will take the opportunity to, to visit, we'll come and learn about the history of the core uh, by looking at this timeline here, um, going back to 1863 over here, and it goes back even farther than that. 
1775 is wow. when this timeline starts. Wow. So the core has been around um, quite a long time, and we're kind of going to br help bring you up to speed with you know something that's happening today, right now. Um, here's another timeline. Um, all the core's involvement in military projects. Oh, I see. And these are uh, projects in Hawaii. The first one, 1906, uh, first federal appropriation to fortify Oahu's coasts, 1906. Okay. Yeah. So let's look around over here. You can see they've got a nice theater for interpretive video with a little bit of history of the course. Oh, I had no idea this was up here. And it's open to the public. Yeah, it's a visitor facility open to the public. So this was. Um, Hello. 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 Yes, I am. Hi, Dick Atchison. Nice Very nice to meet you. You too. And this is Matsuoka. Hi. How are you doing? I'm We're good. We're helping expose people to the visitor oh, okay. facility here. Great. Excellent. And Kind of taking the opportunity too because um, of what's happening right now in North Dakota yes. with the Army Corps right. project yes. there and the, the conflict. Good stuff for a while, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I understand. Um, and you, you're probably aware that there's an evacuation notice that's been given to the camps there that are protecting. Actually, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just kind of with myself. Okay, really. okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of a student of history. I try to make connections, connect the dots as I yeah. read about things yeah. and study. Right. And I see a big connection, of course, between uh, what's happening in North Dakota and some things happening here. And just It was important for me uh, to be here at an Army Corps facility okay. at the same time and sort of in solidarity with those in North Dakota. Okay. Trying to do right by their their water and their people and future generations. Right. Exactly. Well, so. look around. We do have a little short video I need to turn on. I see it's not on yet. Oh, okay. It's been on the conference call, so look around if you have any questions. I'm right here. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So anyway, this this is something we'll we'll leave with um, Angela Jones, the ranger here at the. And there is a, a ranger here to, in this facility. She's assigned to this uh, center, yeah? Right, yeah. She's had quite a, a long career with the Corps and, and got an interest, most interested in the interpretive aspects of the Army Corps. So that's the initial Anyway, this is our addition. Kind of, we're going to make this kind of a gift to the facility here. and Come in a little closer. As they like. Um, it's got a lot of text and we're not going to go over it on the uh, timeline, but what we thought we'd do is just kind of make it easier for me to point out parts of the timeline. Um, I'm going to just be able to stick it out. There. Convenient that that, um, yeah, it is. It <laughs> looks designed for uh, <laughs> anyway. You know, we're getting pretty close to that 10 o'clock um, deadline in North Dakota, but I want to take a little bit to just point out um, without going over everything in detail um, some things that people may have heard about the Dakota Access Pipeline, and then some things that may be new over here a little bit earlier in history. So as many of you know, it was about uh, middle of last year, maybe a little bit earlier, spring of last year and through the summer, when this really started to get picked up in the press because the Army Corps was evaluating an application by energy transfer partners to put this Dakota Access Pipeline 
which would run from North Dakota through South Dakota through Iowa to another pipeline in Illinois. And the Standing Rock Sioux, um, whose reservation is immediately below where the pipeline would cross under the Missouri River at Lake Hawaii, which is created by an Army Corps project that dammed up um, the Missouri River. They were very concerned about water resources and also cultural sites and sacred sites. So that kind of got picked up in the press as um, people started to camp out there near the facility and express their concerns, um, begin to essentially put themselves in the way of some of this uh, pipeline construction. There was a, there was a point in time um, when energy transfer partners, the people who had, they had built in the pipeline, leapfrogged far from where the um, eastern extent of where they'd gotten so far with their pipeline work, leapfrogged all the way over to right closer to Lake Oahe and started bulldozing the pipeline corridor. Um, it was a surprise. It resulted in um, some direct action and some arrests and kind of an ugly scene in which some of the private security uh, released dogs and protesters were injured. So now, why happen? why is the Army Corps doing it rather than private? Uh, then, well, they have, the pipeline company needed to apply to the Army Corps of Engineers. I see. There, it's Lake Oahe is there. Kuliana, I guess would say. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get a little bit into the history of that. Okay. Later, but it's sort of the Army Corps that was going to be the agency to give them the permit. I see. To I cross see. under Lake Oahe. I see. And so far, the pipeline company had almost everything else in place, but they didn't have the permission yet to go under Lake Hawaii. And so this was the sort of last point, um, the last thing they needed to finish the pipeline and start running oil through it. Um, and what was happening during that time of all the protests, and the Army Corps was finishing up their environmental assessment, an environmental assessment is, is kind of a shorter much narrower environmental review compared to a full-blown environmental impact study that results in a statement. So right. for whatever reason, right. it was determined that an EA, environmental assessment, would be sufficient. Sure, um, it'd be quicker too. It'd be quicker. Anyway, the finding was, not surprisingly, no significant impact. I Go ahead. We hear that a lot on, on uh, local uh, projects too. It always seems to come back with no significant impact. Right. So it's something we've, we've seen again and again. But I don't think there was, they were prepared for the level of resistance that they would meet both from the camps and also across the country and right. even other parts of the world that joined, whether virtually or in person. You know, these camps swelled to over 10,000 people at one point. It was incredible. That, and veterans came out. That's right. Um, there was one just... One thing you may have seen in the news too was just before Thanksgiving of, of last year, um, 20 degrees out, there was a major kind of standoff at a, a bridge crossing that had been uh, blocked, a highway that had been blocked by um, the North Dakota authorities. And there was a confrontation in which um, tear gas, rubber bullets, and water with, um, hoses were sprayed on the protesters. So that's the kind of thing right. that made its way into to the, the news on a more um, wider scale. You probably heard something about that. To make a long story short, because I want to get to some of the history, um, the, the Obama administration recognized that, wait a second, actually maybe more study is required here. And at that time, the um, Assistant Secretary of the Army determined that they would, in fact, do a full EIS potentially a two-year process to study this Lake Hawaii crossing, study alternatives to that crossing, and really understand it better before making the final determination. Right. And so they said, we're not granting those easements. Okay. Um, there were some court cases involved. Um, I'm going to give you the link where you can look at this full timeline okay. and get the story. But then, of course, we had a, a change of administrations, and the new occupants of the White House didn't feel that same way. And the Army changed its position. And even though the environmental impact study process had already started, many thousands of people had already submitted comments, including myself, 
about what was appropriate to consider and why other alternatives should be considered, why the pipeline shouldn't be built at all, maybe even why the whole pipeline should be considered as one project, which the National Environmental Policy Act would require. Why aren't we studying the whole thing instead of this piecemeal approach of a little EA here, a little EA right. here, and it all goes forward. Anyway, to make a long story short, the, one of those executive orders uh, of the new occupants of the White House was to uh, direct the Army to stop that environmental backstaking process, mm. issue those permits and easements, and get the thing going again. Uh, did the same thing to try to revive the Keystone pipeline, the Keystone Excel pipeline at the same time. So that's where we are. The easements have since been granted. The environmental impact study process has stopped. And now here we are today. The last thing on the timeline here is the deadline for the camp to be evacuated. Which is like right now. Which is essentially right now. And I think a lot of us want to tune into that uh, soon. I want to just bring your attention to one thing over here on this side of the timeline. Okay. Because you hear about, um, you, s you see some maps that show the pipeline route going just to the north of the reservation, the yeah. Sandy Rocks, not crossing the reservation right. itself. But yet there's arguments made about, well, nevertheless, those lands to the north are treaty lands. What's going on there? Hmm. So, not to make a real long history lesson, but we have right. two treaties at Fort Laramie, one in 1851 and one in 1868. And the 1851 treaty established a large uh, territory for the Sioux, which included uh, lands traversed by the pipeline. Uh -huh. In 1868, another treaty uh, reduced the reservation size for the Standing Rock Sioux specifically to a point just below, uh, just below those uh, where the pipeline crosses. However, very importantly, that treaty of 1868 said these other lands, they're not ceded. They're specifically not ceded. Uh. So there is uh, authority and that the, uh, the Sioux legally maintain over those lands. Then what happened in 1874 was gold discovered in the Black Hills. Uh -huh. Some of us know that story. Um, that led to the U.S. trying to get the suit to cede lands. And they found a minority of uh, tribal chiefs and headmen to sign an agreement saying they, they gave up I see. the Black Hills. But very importantly, in, in that 1868 treaty, there was a provision that said any cession of lands has to be agreed to by three-fourths of the adult tribal male population. I see. And that never happened. And so the lands were never legally ceded. But yet they're using that treaty as a justification for the building of the pipeline? Well, they're, they're using it as justification for not doing the level of consultation. I that see. They have. I see. And the tribe is looking at the legal history. Uh, because in, in 74, the Indian uh, Claims Commission basically said, yeah, that's right, these lands were not, were not ceded. Mm. In fact, the Black Hills, when those were taken, um, the, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. Right. One of, the Supreme Court at that time said, a more ripe and rank case of dishonorable dealing will never, in all probability, be found in our history. So the Supreme Court agreed, too. Yeah. That the Black Hills were taken legally. And tied in with the Black Hills at that same time are these lesser-known other lands that include this land right to the north of the Standing Rock Reservation right. that the pipeline goes through. So I think that's important to understand. Um, it's important to understand, too, that in 1959, this is where the Army Corps comes in again, when the Missouri River was dammed and flooded Lake Oahe and flooded out many of the prime agricultural lands of the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. This is an important context to keep in mind as well. So anyway, I, I hope you've um, appreciated and enjoyed our visit to the Army Corps of Engineers, Pacific Regional Visitor Facility. And I hope you've learned a little bit. I'm gonna show you that um, 
web address if you want to look at the timeline yourself. Let's get real close and I'm going to take a still screenshot. Very good. Okay, so that's um, bit.ly slash DAPL for Dakota Access Pipeline, all caps, and then 0222 for February 22. In. Okay. Okay. So thank send you. your best thoughts, prayers, whatever you do to the water protectors in North Dakota. So it's 2 p.m., 2.11 actually, 2.11 p.m. in uh, at Standing Rock. And it's, right. Uh, so we don't know right now what's going on exactly. Maybe some of you are tuned into it on another device. They were asking for our prayers at 2.22. So, so let's, let's give them our prayers, our, our positive thoughts. We want to avoid loss of life. We want to heal our relationship with indigenous peoples and the land. Thanks, David. Thanks, and Dad. thank you for following us.